Okay, hello my friends and welcome back to, you're with me for the thermodynamics video number three. You're doing good. Here we go. I know today is going to be more definitions. Y'all are ready to start working some problems. But we, we're kind of laying the groundwork here with definitions before we get started. So today we're going to be talking about the state postulate. What in the world, okay? Let's start off, start off talking about equilibrium, okay? When we say that, that the state of matter or the system is in equilibrium, it's in global equilibrium, what does that mean? Well, all of these kind of conditions have to be met for that to be in equilibrium, okay? So number one, you have to have thermal equilibrium, which means this, right? If I have a, um, a system, I don't know, it has some kind of gas or something in it, right? If I have a molecule over here that's at 50 degrees, one over here that's at 30, one over here is 20, and this guy's at 40, and there's one at 37, right? Then that's not in thermal equilibrium. So thermal equilibrium, the temperature is the same everywhere in the system. So it's been sitting there, it's all normalized, it's all equalized, everything is the same, every molecule is the same throughout the system. Now we have thermal equilibrium. There's mechanical equilibrium, okay? so. There's no change in, in pressure with time. So if I had the, some kind of like a piston arrangement on here or something like that, right? And it was putting some kind of downward force on my system. In order to have mechanical equilibrium, I can't have a change in pressure there. I can't be squeezing on that. Everything's got to be still and normalized, equalized for us to have equilibrium. Phase equilibrium, okay? Remember your phases, solids, liquids, gases, right? The mass of each phase must remain constant. So you've got like, if you had like a liquid, like water in the bottom, and then you had a gas over the top of that, maybe just air or something, then those have to be constant. They have to be the same. They can't, there can't be any chemical reactions where they're changing phases or one's going to the other, a solid's going to a, a, a liquid or vice versa. Um, so you have a phase equilibrium when we look at, the, when we talk about state of e equilibrium. We also have a chemical equilibrium, which means the chemical composition is not changing with time. So there's no chemical reactions in there. Those things aren't dissolving and giving off exothermic heat and doing all kinds of things. All that is done and it's just, it's sitting there just like a glass of water. And if I come back tomorrow, it's going to be the same exact composition tomorrow. Okay. So that's what we mean when we're talking about equilibrium of the system. Okay. So let's talk about the state postulate. Okay. Now the state postulate has to do with the state of the matter, the state of the system. What's it doing? What's it feeling? What's the temperature? What's the pressure? What's the mass? What's the, you know, all those things, right? So let's talk about the state postulate that this is going to, this is going to be defining some terms that tell us about the condition of the state of our system. So the number of properties to fix the state of matter or of a system is the state postulate. So how many things the pressure, the temperature, the time, or whatever it is, how many properties do I have to have to fix the state of the matter so that I know everything there is to know about it, okay? So here we go. Here's a little definition for us. This is important. This is probably a good one for thermo that you need to write this one down. The state of a simple compressible. Now, I've made that in red. I'm going to underline it, right? Compressible system. This isn't an incompressible, but compressible system, which means it's some kind of gas, right? Um, or steam or something like that, right? A compressible system is completely specified by two independent intensive properties. And we, if you don't remember what intensive or independent properties are, go back to the last video, review that, and remember this, right? Independent, intensive, right? Those are properties that are not, they don't change if the size of the system changes, okay? They, 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 they don't change those properties. Um, and so, so compressible system completely defined by two independent intensive properties. Okay. So here you go. Remember the properties are independent. This is a little, this, this furthers our definition of an independent variable. Okay. Remember the properties are independent if one can be varied while the other one stays the same. So if I have something like temperature and specific volume, if I change this one, that one doesn't change. That makes it an independent variable, okay? So let's, here's a couple more um, points here, kind of specific points that really um, further define our system here. So temperature and what's little v, do you remember? We did that last video. 
That's specific volume. In other words, it's like a per unit volume. What's the mass per unit of a, a little volume of whatever I have in my system? Remember, the volume of the whole system is defined as this guy. We, we call him just big V, right? But little v is the specific volume. It's a per unit volume. So temperature and specific volume are always independent properties and can fix the state of a compressible system. Okay, again, there we go with compressible again. Okay, so if I have, generally for a compressible system, um, you're going to be given the temperature and the specific volume. Okay, and then we'll be able to tell everything else about the system. I'll show you an example right over here in just a second. So T and P, temperature and pressure, are independent properties for a single phase system, like if the whole system was gas or the whole system was a liquid or whatever, right? But they're dependent for multi-phase systems. So once I mix the phases, uh, these are not independent anymore, okay? So that's an important thing to remember. I know that's a lot to remember, isn't it? We'll try and make some rules up as we go along to help you remember, though. So temperature and specific volume. So let's look at this system over here. Here is, here's a system. What is the state of that system? Well, they tell us the temperature is 25 degrees C and the specific volume is 0.9 cubic meters per kilogram. So every kilogram of nitrogen takes up 0.9 cubic meters of volume. Okay, add another cubic, add another kilogram, get another 0.9 cubic meters, right? That's what I mean. That's, that's, that's specific volume or per unit volume. So if you have something like this equation, this is the ideal gas equation, okay? If you have something like that, well, let's make it a big T, not a little T, that's time. Let's don't be confusing there, okay? If you have that equation, if you give me the temperature and the specific volume, I'll tell you the pressure of that system, I'll tell you the mass of that system, and then this is, uh, we'll talk about R a little bit later, okay, when we get to the ideal gas equation. This is like future stuff. So be watching. Okay, so again, these two independent variables set the state for all the rest of the variables for that system. Okay, so all I need is two, and then I know everything about that system. So that's the state postulate. I hope that helps kind of explain the state postulate. If you read that in the book, it's not super duper pretty clear. So Maybe that'll clear it up. Okay, come back next time. We're going to talk about processes and cycles. So that should be interesting. So keep on watching.